Kanna. Probe skipped. Arvind Kejriwal skips the ED summons which was issued in connection with the now scrapped Delhi excise policy case. Catastrophic damage. Scores killed and injured after second Israeli airstrike hits Gaza refugee camp. Utter destruction. Dozens still remain missing days after Hurricane Otis made landfall in Mexico resort of Acapulco. Day of the Dead. Musicians, dancers and local residents in Havana celebrate the Day of the Dead remembering lost loved ones. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We have an expansive coverage for you this Thursday night. Today we start off in India's capital, Delhi, as Chief Minister Arvind Kerjival refused to appear before India's Financial Crimes Agency for questioning in an alleged corruption case, saying that the summons were vague and politically motivated. The Enforcement Directorate is investigating a case related to a now scrapped liquor policy case in New Delhi. The leader of the Aam Admi Party, which governs Delhi, Arvind Kerjival, has been summoned for questioning by the ED today. But minutes before it was time for him to show up at the ED office, he released a statement saying that the summons was unclear about whether he was being summoned as a witness or a suspect in the case. He said it was also unclear if he was being summoned in his capacity as chief minister or as the national convener of his party. He added that being the leader and star campaigner for his party, he had to travel for campaigning work to states where assembly elections are due in November. Legal experts say that an individual can ignore an ED summons only three times. After that, the ED can get a non-bailable warrant mandating Mr. Kejriwal's presence in court on a specific date. If he does not show up, Mr. Kejriwal can be arrested. Alternatively, he can challenge the summons in court or seek bail. India's top investigation agency, the Central Bureau of Investigation and the ED, alleged that there were irregularities in framing and implementation of the liquor policy in Delhi. The policy was implemented by the AAP government in 2021 and was withdrawn less than a year later. Investigators alleged that it favoured certain liquor dealers and that illicit gains were used by the AAP to fund an election campaign, allegations that the AAP has strongly denied. AAP leaders Manish Sisodia and Sanjay Singh have also been arrested in the case. The AAP has accused the federal government of a political vendetta and the BJP accused the AAP of indulging in corrupt practices for political gains. Questions of corruption are a sensitive matter for the AAP, which emerged more than 10 years ago from a major movement against corruption, with Kejriwal described as an anti-corruption crusader. In April, Mr. Kejriwal was questioned by the CBI for nine hours in connection with the case. At the time, he had said that the entire case was fabricated and built to bring down his party. The AAP has been trying to position itself as a key opposition force to the BJP. Apart from being in power in Delhi and Punjab state, it contested elections in Goa this year and plans to do so in three more states. Many opposition leaders, including Mr. Kejriwal, have accused the BJP of using federal agencies to target them in the run-up to the general elections in 2024, an allegation the governing party denies. Today, hours before Mr. Kejriwal was to be questioned, the ED searched Delhi Social Welfare Minister Raj Kumar Anand's house and nine other places linked to him in a separate money laundering case. Israel Hamas war updates now. Egypt opened its borders through the Rafah crossing to allow limited evacuations of the injured and foreigners yesterday. The border will be opened again for the second day today. And a second Israeli airstrike also hit the Jalabia refugee camp in Gaza. A total of 335 foreign passport holders were allowed to leave Gaza via the Rafah crossing on Wednesday, as well as 76 Palestinians who were seriously injured due to the ongoing airstrikes in the region. The Rafah crossing is expected to be opened for the second straight day on Thursday to allow more foreign nationals stuck in Gaza to evacuate safely to Egypt. According to sources, the list of those allowed to evacuate through the crossing will be agreed between Egypt and Israel, with embassies from respective countries being informed in advance to ensure they can prepare to receive their citizens. Meanwhile, the Israeli military conducted an airstrike in the Jabalia area of northern Gaza for the second straight day on Wednesday. 
While the number of casualties from the second airstrike has not been confirmed, Gaza's health ministry says dozens of people were killed or wounded in the latest attack. According to the United Nations, there are some 116,000 registered refugees in the camp, which was set up in the aftermath of the 1948 Arab-Israeli war. While Israel says it had targeted high-ranking Hamas officials hiding in the camp and eliminated a top Hamas commander, the Palestinian militant group has dismissed the claim and instead noted that seven of the hostages taken from Israel, including three foreign passport holders, were killed in the strike. The statement from Hamas has not yet been verified. The combined Israeli and Palestinian death toll has now surpassed 10,000. Gaza's health ministry says over 8,800 Palestinians have been killed so far, with around 1,400 deaths reported in Israel. Children make up a third of the total death toll. Donald Trump's legal troubles are deepening. Donald Trump Jr. is scheduled to testify in a New York civil fraud trial, which is threatening his family's real estate empire. Donald Trump Jr. took the witness stand in the civil fraud trial against his father's business empire on Wednesday. He told a Manhattan court that he had little to do with financial practices that are at the heart of the case. His father, former U.S. President Donald Trump, and his family businesses are accused of inflating asset values to dupe lenders and insurers. Donald Jr., an executive vice president at the Trump Organization and a co-defendant in the case, is the first of Trump's adult children to testify, followed by Eric and Ivanka Trump. Their father is set to testify on Monday. Donald Jr. said he and Eric largely took over management of the company when their father assumed the presidency in 2017. His testimony could continue into Thursday and be another flashpoint in a trial punctuated by sharp exchanges between lawyers and witnesses and heated arguments over the admissibility of evidence. The lawsuit by Democratic New York Attorney General Letitia James accuses Trump, his two adult sons, and a handful of their family businesses of inflating their assets by billions of dollars to secure better loan terms. Trump has denied wrongdoing and has repeatedly accused James and the judge of political bias. James is seeking at least $250 million in fines, a permanent ban against Trump and his two adult sons from running businesses in New York, and a five-year commercial real estate ban against Trump and the Trump Organization. Over in Russia, the Russian Defense Ministry reported that Russian forces have repelled two assaults of Ukrainian forces in the direction of Kopyansk and Karnasi Liman in eastern Ukraine. They launched attacks on effectives and equipment of three Ukrainian brigades in Donetsk in the east. Additionally, the Russian troops also smashed many ammunition depots of a special brigade of the Ukrainian army in Kharkiv Oblast in the northeastern part of Ukraine. Also yesterday, the general staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces released a report stating that 43 battles had taken place in the frontline areas in the past 24 hours. The Ukrainian army repelled several Russian attacks in the direction of Avdivka, Kupyansk and Marinka in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian forces continue to attack Russian forces on the front in the direction of Metrodol in southeastern Ukraine and Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine. Tonight's Road to the White House now. Running with a promise to spoil the 2024 presidential contest, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. just received a sign that he might be making good on that pitch. A recent poll shows him with 22% support in a hypothetical three-way race against President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. Biden, by contrast, would take 39% of the vote and Trump would come away with 36%, according to the Quinnipiac University survey. In another positive sign for Kennedy, he came away with the backing of a plurality of independents. 36% chose him, compared with 31% for Trump and 30% for Biden. The overall 22% does not suggest that he can yet break through the two-party system and put his name on the Electoral College map as an independent. 
In a warning sign for Democrats, Kennedy was the leading choice for young voters aged 18 to 34 in the poll's surveyed population, 38% of whom chose the environmental lawyer. From the same age group, 32% picked Biden and 27% went for Trump. Welcome back. Much of northwestern Europe went on high alert as a storm dubbed Kiaran threatened to bring Gulf Force winds and extreme rainfall to the region. Hours to go before the arrival of Storm Kiran, this town in the northwest of France is leaving nothing to chance. The mayor and her team are out distributing sandbags to residents to reduce the risk of flooding. There could be a lot of flooding. They're forecasting 150 kilometers an hour. There is surely a risk of flooding, even if it's light. Unfortunately, against water, there's not a whole lot you can do. So we're doing what we can. We should try everything. The incoming storm's arrival has pushed business owners to shut early and take precautions to prevent damage. We need to ensure there's nothing outside which can fly away with the wind, because they forecast 150 kilometers per hour. We decided to close the restaurant so we don't put our clients or our staff in danger because we finished late. Local authorities have closed off access to beaches and boat owners went to ports on the Atlantic to tie up their vessels in the hopes that damage is minimized. I've been here for over 30 years and I've never known anything like this. It's going to be insane. I'm not calm. Nobody's calm. Weather forecasters have placed three departments in northwestern France on red storm alert, with 30 departments on orange alert. The French Interior Ministry has announced the deployment of over 3,000 firefighters to areas expected to be the hardest hit. Ghana's President Nana Akufuado called for reform of the United Nations Security Council. While citing conflicts in Ukraine and Gaza, he described the council to be in many ways not fit for purpose. Ghana's president has called for reform of the United Nations Security Council, citing conflicts in Ukraine and Gaza. Nana Akufuado described the council as, in many ways, not fit for purpose. The classic example is what is happening uh, over the Ukraine conflict, where the, the nation that is the aggressor is also the veto-wielding country and which is blocking any initiatives that the Security Council can take over the, the conflict. Akufo Addo also pointed to the conflict in Gaza. He said that while Ghana fully recognized Israel's right to defend itself, at the same time, you have to look at the humanitarian consequences. There's clearly a need for us, all of us, the international community, the global community, to, log, to look beyond the immediate issues of the, of, 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 of the of consequences of the Hamas uh, attacks on Israel, to be looking at the possibility of a comprehensive settlement of this matter. Akufo Addo was speaking as he hosted Germany's Chancellor on Tuesday. Olaf Scholz also called for changes. I believe that African states need to be better represented in international organizations and should have a stronger voice. He noted the recent inclusion of the African Union as a member of the G20 as a good development, but added that we also support efforts for permanent African seats on the UN Security Council. Three generations of a family in Mexico have gone missing after Hurricane Otis. The Category 5 hurricane devastated the Mexican coastal resort of Acapulco. 22-year-old Maria del Rosario Saravia comes to wait at this dock every day for news of her mother, two brothers, and four-year-old son. Since she lost touch with them a week ago, when the Category 5 Hurricane Otis struck the Mexican city of Acapulco. Apparently, they stayed there on the boat at 11.40 p.m. I spoke to my mother, and she told me that they were fine. Then I couldn't communicate with her anymore. I lost signal. I can't communicate with her anymore. 
To this day, I have not been able to communicate with any of them. It was the last day I saw them, and I hope to see them again soon. She says her mother, younger brother, and son were with her father, a fisherman, on his boat when the storm hit. Her elder brother, a boat captain, was on a separate boat, which has been missing since the storm. Saravia says her relatives were ordered by their bosses to look after the boats through the storm. Her father is the only one she has seen since. They sank over there. My father was shipwrecked all night, but he doesn't know where my mother, my brother and my baby are. He says they were with him, but the pressure of the water and the force of the air took them away. So we have been here since the first day looking for them, but we haven't heard from any of them. Nor have we had any support from any authority, government or my father's employer. Authorities say Otis was the most powerful storm to ever strike Mexico's Pacific coast. The record-breaking storm ripped apart homes and businesses and left the nearly 900,000 residents of Acapulco in the dark. At least 50 people were killed in the storm, and there is fear more bodies were swept out to sea, with the search effort ongoing. Help, divers, please help, the sign reads. Acapulco authorities have given few details on the dead and injured, but the state government says dozens are still missing. It's not clear if Saravia's family members are included in the tally. Mexico's government on Wednesday announced a $3.4 billion recovery plan for the battered city. But as many Acapulco residents begin to rebuild, Saravia says she will remain camped at the dock until she has answers. We'll be here until we found our relatives. I can't say tomorrow we won't come because we don't know when we will find them. We'll be here until we find them. The pharma giant GSK beat on top and bottom lines after a strong launch of respiratory syncytial virus vaccine. Let's take a look. GSK raised its full year profit and sales forecasts for a second time on Wednesday. The drug maker did so after better than expected quarterly sales of a new vaccine. GSK believes the respiratory drug Arexvi could be its next big selling medicine. It was launched in the US recently and recorded third quarter sales of $862 million, far ahead of analyst forecasts. The drug maker expects full year sales of up to around $1.2 billion for the shot. One leading analyst said GSK had exceeded market hopes for strong quarterly sales and forward guidance. GSK now expects sales to rise by 12 to 13 percent this year, up from earlier projections of 8 to 10 percent. But the company still faces costly U.S. litigation over its discontinued heartburn drug Zantac. GSK has about 79,000 cases related to Zantac in the U.S., with most scheduled for trial starting January 2024. GSK shares gained around 3 percent after the update before falling back. Welcome back. Uzbekistan welcomes Emmanuel Macron in Samarkand. For more on that story and more, let's stay down the world. French President Emmanuel Macron arrived in Uzbekistan, which will mark the end of the French leader's tour to the countries of Central Asia. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte received a state welcoming ceremony hosted by Vietnamese Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin. The two Prime Ministers held talks to enhance custom procedures, promote trade and agreements on exploitation of important minerals. A pilot was rescued from a small plane that crashed in a remote area of the Florida Everglades. Australian police said that they arrested a 49-year-old woman over the deaths of 300 people in August after they allegedly consumed poisonous mushrooms at a lunch hosted by her. Denmark's Holger Ruhl made the third round of the Paris Masters by defeating Austria Dominic TM 6462. That is all we have for you on World News tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you miss any of today's program, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in Havana, Cuba, as Havana celebrated the Day of the Dead with a colorful parade, bringing skeletons to life. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.